What is up, people? We are nine months into 2022, and there has been a lot shown for the road to Alpha 2 with Ashes of Creation, and we aren't even done yet. But this video is really to get you people up to speed who may not have been following the full development of Ashes of Creation or may have missed something earlier in the year as we summarize every major update Intrepid has shown us for the game so far this year. Before we get started though, if you do enjoy this content, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and help the channel hit 10k subs by the end of the year. Ever since the successful Alpha 1 launch in 2021, everyone had been patiently waiting for Alpha 2 and to see all it has to offer. Alpha 1 was obviously more of a server and functional test for Ashes of Creation and not much of a content test. Although there was some stuff to do, Alpha 2 is really where the fun begins. But to really see the progress that Intrepid has made and all the cool things they've shown us this year, we are actually going to head back to December of 2021, which I know isn't technically this year, but it's really the first big game-changing announcement that really set the tone for the following nine months after, with the announcement of Ashes of Creation moving to Unreal Engine 5. With this we got a 20 minute gameplay video as creative director Stephen Sharif headed through a new snowy biome talking about and showing us some of the new things that they could do with UE5 including the lumen system which creates much more realistic lighting support for larger worlds and faster dev time as more than one dev could be in engine at the same time developing and changing the world which Unreal Engine 4 didn't allow and again this really set the tone for what we see next although January and February were a tad bit slow March which came with the announcement of the in-depth and extensive character creator, allowing for very, very deep customization of the race that you will be choosing to play when you step into the world of Vera. This character creator allows you to sculpt the face by clicking and dragging on certain points, along with having various sliders and color wheels to change up the length of the hair, placement and size of tattoos, and much more, really allowing for you to fine-tune your character when you step foot into Ashes of Creation. This character creator also allows for blood blending of preset models to combine features, which is a faster alternative for those of you who don't want to be stuck in the character creator forever, but still allowing you to fine tune the blending with sliders afterwards. For some of us though, May was an even bigger reveal, showing us the brand new biome called the Kayla Riverlands, along with the massive season tech behind the game. Seasons in Ashes of Creation will play a huge part and rotate on a weekly cycle going through the four seasons depending on the biome, and some biomes may also have less traditional seasons than you may expect, while others may have their seasons altered by world changing events or not have seasons at all. As we see in the showcase, not only does the weather affect the movement of the grass and the water and snow buildup on the roads, but it also changes the type of creatures and resources that you will find within the world, can alter elemental abilities for players, block roads pathways for trade routes and reveal hidden secrets in the world that can't be accessed in different seasons. This system alone is game changing in something that we have never seen to this extent in an MMORPG. June once again somehow topped what came before, giving us our first look at the revamped combat system, showing a fighter class called the Weapon Master go up against some rock creatures, showing us the massive changes in combat since Alpha 1. Although they still aren't completely perfect, combat is something that we really won't know how it feels until we can actually play for it ourselves and mess around with it. This showcase does show that Intrepid has no issue changing up direction mid-development to respond to player feedback though, as they continue to try to give us something truly special and unique. This showcase though was not the whole combat system, as it was just basic weapon attacks and a lot more is to be revealed down the road. In July, we got our first look at the desert biome, and Intrepid has really done a great job making a desert feel like it's a place you'll want to set out and explore. As desert biomes in games, you know, usually kind of suck. Although we didn't get a full 20 minute plus gameplay video of the area like we normally do from Intrepid, it came in the look of a three minute video showing a player traverse across this zone. Along with this reveal, we learned about some new tech being developed in-house at Intrepid called Landform, which allows for artists to do in-engine sculpting and texture blending without needing an external application, which should again really help with speeding up the world building process and the development overall for Ashes of Creation. In August, the big update was the world map, where we went from this map to this one. And Intrepid announced that the map had nearly tripled in size, going up to 1,200 square kilometers, 750 square kilometers of this map being made up of ocean. They also showed that the world has been reshaped a little bit, with some biomes being repositioned, adding new islands and new zones as well. And with the massive amount of water added to the game, we can tell that Intrepid really wants to bring naval content to life as players can set out on their own ships. 
this. This is a system that I presume is going a lot better in development than Intrepid initially thought, and they're putting more resources into it and more support for players in the game. With this though, they also announced that Oceans will be open PvP, so the corruption system will not be in play. If you stick to the coast, you'll still be under the protection of the corruption system, but as soon as you set out to the open water, it will be every man for himself, which was a very big and very much needed change in my opinion, giving players a space where they can engage in open world PvP without the consequences of corruption. Now, obviously, this brings us to September where we are now, and we have four live streams remaining before the end of the year. And we know that September is going to be focused on ranged combat, which you won't want to miss on Friday, September 30th, where we will see the Ranger in action for the first time since the pre-Alpha 1 builds. The last three months are fair game, but I'd imagine at least one of these three live streams will show us some naval content, which has been gradually teased throughout the past year with ships sailing in the background and community questions on social media. But for those of you holding out for Alpha 2, I wouldn't hold your breath for this year, although we could potentially still see some spots testing, maybe even access to the character creator to mess around with, we still have a long ways to go and we'll just have to wait and see. What has been your favorite announcement so far this year? Drop a comment down below and if you're new to Ashes and have yet to create an account, feel free to use my referral link in the description below where you can jump in on the forums, grab some cosmetic packs, or just be ready for when Ashes of Creation finally comes about. Otherwise, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, turn on the bell for notifications, and stay tuned for a lot more to come.